Welcome back to John Author's Note. Well, the Incredibles of 2012 were really the central bank governors, at least as far as uh, financial markets and economies were concerned. We had action by the US Federal Reserve uh, to support the US economy. We had the European Central Bank propping up the Eurozone. With me to discuss the effects and the possible dangers of all this central bank action is uh, John Plender, uh, my colleague and Financial Times columnist. Thank you very much, John. I think uh, the best way of showing the scale of the ECB action is if we just look at their balance sheets uh, and how they've expanded over the past few years. Our first chart shows, in fact, what's happened since the start of the uh, global economic crisis. Uh, massive expansion of balance sheets by the Bank of England, the Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank. John, my first question, I suppose, would be, is it possible to say where we'd be today if the central banks had not acted so boldly? Well, I think if the central banks had not engaged in these asset purchase programs, the likelihood is that the enormous deleveraging that's been going on in the banking system, uh, in the household sector, and in the non-financial corporate sector would not have been offset. Chiefly what has happened as a result of quantitative easing and the other unconventional measures is that that has prevented us going into a 1930-style slump. A, a much worse slump, obviously, than we're in at the moment, and higher unemployment. That's right. As well. And what about the Eurozone? I mean, the ECB, uh, we shouldn't forget, has been quite bold, hasn't actually bought uh, assets this year, but it said it would if necessary. Well, it's the intention that's important. And of course, the ECB under Mario Draghi is a transformed institution. Uh, the measures that it is prepared to engage in, the OMT program. These are radical things which have led to the stabilization of the sovereign debt market in the Eurozone and completely changed perceptions in markets about the potential for growth okay, and but, handling debt. But nothing in life is uh, risk-free. Um, what are the dangers of such bold action by our superheroes? Well, we are in quite tricky territory in the sense that central banks now have multiple targets which are potentially confusing. They're also taking on a quasi-fiscal role. All these asset purchase programs involve market risk, which can fall on the taxpayer. And there's a big question about whether the central banks are sufficiently accountable as they put taxpayers' money at risk. Uh, accountable? You mean, uh, should we trust independent central bankers as much as we have in the past? Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is that the independent central bankers are now playing with taxpayers' money because of the unconventional measures they're taking. And that means that you need a tight chain of accountability, ultimately, to Parliament. And and in many cases, notably the ECB and Bank of Japan, you don't have that. Uh, what's the dangers of that then, if they're um, out of control, if you like? Well, I think the, the, the dangers are that uh, taxpayers are at risk. And of course, uh, if you have these um, very substantial loosenings of monetary policy in unconventional ways, then the risk of both asset price inflation and retail price inflation becomes uh, potentially real, though in the short run the big pressures are actually deflationary rather than inflationary. You mentioned the multitasking that central bankers have uh, set themselves. One of the uh, tasks that the um, Federal Reserve has become explicit about now is combating unemployment. And if we look at our second chart, and this may be a way of looking forward to 2013, we see the scale of the challenge, unemployment uh, remaining high across, uh, across the US, uh, stubbornly high uh, in the Eurozone, um, particularly in countries like Spain. Do you think that central banks are going to be as much of the story in 2013 as they were in 2012? I think they will indeed be very much of the story because you can't see that fiscal policy in the US, Europe or Japan is going to be in any expansionary mode at all. Uh, a lot of the weight of trying to uh, you know, handle the problem of unemployment is going to fall again on the central bankers. But is there a risk, I wonder, of a transatlantic split because the European Central Bank, much more conservative than the Fed, got a bigger unemployment problem though, but is the ECB going to be left behind? I don't think so. I think that they're all essentially looking in the same direction. They know that there is a very serious problem with growth and unemployment. They know that you can't handle public sector debt problems unless you have growth. That's the big lesson of Japan. And that is why you have Ben Bernanke at the Fed uh, targeting unemployment in this novel way very explicitly. And it's also why you have uh, the ECB engaging in this potential uh, OMT type rescue. John, thank you very much. So there we have the uh, role of the central banks. Looks like it's going to be as important, as crucial in 2013 in Central Bankers We Trust.